What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome to another episode of Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. This is where we highlight disability leaders and advocates in the community and the amazing work that they do. I'm your host for today's episode. My name is Superior Den, and I head up Accessibility's nonprofit partnership program. I'm very, very excited for today's guest, my good friend Isaac. So welcome. Hello, hello. Good to be here again. Yes, it's your second spotlight. <laughs> yes. And we're so excited to feature you because from getting to know you, you do a lot in the community. Can you share a little bit about yourself and some of the amazing activities that you do? Gosh, yeah. Where to begin, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll go from the beginning. I'm very short, so born with a disability called limb pelvic hypoplasia, meaning I have no arms and short legs. I have a weak pelvis, so I'm not able to walk and I've also got scoliosis which is a curvature of the spine and even though I do have all of these obstacles and disabilities it doesn't stop me from skydiving, tall ship sailing, being the president of an organization called Wheels and Wheelchairs and most recently taking part in modeling for London Fashion Week wearing adaptive clothing and much much more. And there's a lot more. Yes. So, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you got involved, for example, with London Fashion Week. Yeah, so it all began quite a while ago. I'll be honest. So when it came to fashion, I always kind of mocked the industry because I didn't really, underst under really understand it. And whenever I did see fashion it was people wearing the most ridiculous clothing so I didn't really get it and I didn't understand why that was even shown on runways and catwalks um, so fashion for me was that picture in my head and I didn't really get it but after I had um, shared my story on LinkedIn this was the first year I was on LinkedIn I got approached by an adaptive clothing brand Unhidden through a woman called Victoria. And she started telling me about adaptive clothing and how she wanted to collaborate with me with wheels and wheelchairs. And I thought I'd, I've never heard of adaptive clothing before because when it came to clothing, my mom would just make the clothes fit me. So, you know, I never really heard of the term adaptive clothing, but I, I listened and I thought, okay, this is an interesting concept. And then, a couple of months went by and I was given an opportunity to do some modeling for her for one of the shows in London. This wasn't part of London Fashion Week. This was a pop-up shop that was just showcasing different adaptive brands. And I said, yeah, sure. But I've never done modeling before, but I'm happy to do it. And I got to wear the clove, got to wear one set of clothing, which had magnetic buttons. And as soon as I wore it, I kind of, and it was like a revelation, like, oh, actually, I, I get it now. I understand why it's so important. And I've also learned how many people are missed out on clothing because they're not adaptive for, and people don't have the choice for clothing as well. So that kind of made me understand. And then I kind of got more involved in the industry, which has definitely been an eye opener in many different ways but it's a it's a good space to be in because at the end of the day we want clothes and fashion to be more inclusive so I'm glad I'm there and I can share that with my network and show the importance of it even though it comes with a lot of drama and a lot of craziness I'm just here to have a bit of fun with it yeah because clothing is such an express in, uh, an expression of who we are and how we feel also. So to have something that is adaptive to specific need or a way of living is also really important. What was that revelation moment like when you understood why adaptive fashion is important? What was it like? Yeah. Uh, I think it was just like such an eye opener because for me, you know, I, I consider myself as a disability advocate, 
but I've been learning so much about the community and everyone's needs that this was just another layer of understanding of how far we need to go and what pe different people's needs are when it comes to living a day-to-day -day life and being able to express themselves however they want to. So it's definitely made me learn a lot more being in these different industries and collaborating with different people. Yeah, and you mentioned that you're on LinkedIn, and I know that you've also shared a lot of insights about the fashion industry instead of some of your advocacy. Yes, yeah. So I, I share, I don't know how I managed to do this, but I share a story at least one a day of the different things that I get up to. And yeah, the fashion industry is definitely one of them. And we, we've been talking about it and I was saying about watching the film, The Devil Wears Prada. I was going I, to ask you about yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. But that's really changed my perspective on the industry as well as life itself. So, okay, I have another question for you, which is, <laughs> do you, is what do you think brands and businesses in the fashion industry or even beyond that can do to make the world more inclusive like do do they have a part in it even oh absolutely i mean it's it's businesses which make the world go round it's how the money gets transported everywhere but i feel and and this is why i'm like a purple tuesday ambassador and and how i talk openly about customer experiences and how i've done mystery shopping and things it's so important to get it right uh, not only does it help your business succeed, but it also allows people to be able to spend their money and talk to people, you know, to talk to people and see what they need to do and have the courage to say like, yeah, I'm not going to get it right, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to get it wrong and get better. Because, you know, you want, I, because one thing which always has always confused me is how inclusion or even disability is not at the forefront of every conversation, knowing that if anyone can get a disability at any given time. And why wouldn't you want to make a representation of your business and inclusion? Because you're only helping yourself get more money. I know it's sad to say, but that's like the truth of it. You, you gain more better business you have a better customer experience and more inclusion mm -hmm. so yeah it should be at the forefront of every conversation and yeah speaking to people with those lived experiences i love that and i love that what you said before about the willingness to get it wrong because mm. i think the fear of trying prevents a lot of businesses and people from actually putting them in the in that place of wanting to make a difference or being able to uh, because what about the investment of money if we're talking about money making the world go round? So what happens to the investment if uh, if it fails? But if you can learn from that failure, you can improve upon it in the next time. And that makes a huge difference, not only for the business themselves trying to do it right, but also for the community to understand that there's, you know, a way forward. Mm. Uh, what are some of the accessibility challenges that you face when trying to complete a purchase or even visit a store? Yeah, well, I mean, it depends on the store because I've had a lot of uh, good experiences as well as bad ones. I'm not going to name and shame any brands, but, you know, there's some where I, can, I, I would go into the store and they would be very accommodating Actually, I'm going to say a, a brand which did well in doing this. So throughout the mystery shopping, I went into Gucci. By the way, high, high street luxury brand shopping is like something I never thought I'd ever get myself into. So it's definitely an eye opener in that regard, as well as usually I'm with someone, but my friend who was doing this research got me to go in independently. So this was like a whole new step for me as well, because yeah, I would usually be shopping with someone. So it's literally going in and getting the staff to help me from the get go. But yeah, so went into Gucci, 
to do a purchase. My friend challenged me to get some glasses and I got to use his credit card. So didn't have to worry <laughs> about that. Um, but I, yeah, I went into the Gucci store and how they, they did, they approached me very well and said, oh, someone will be with you because how it works in those brands is you have a personalized shopper with you who takes you throughout the whole journey. So I went in and I said, oh, I'm looking for some sunglasses. And they took me over to the glass stand and literally put the glasses onto my face and took me over to the mirror so I could have a look. And so I made sure that they were still doing well. I said, okay, no, I want to try on another pair. And they were willing to do that as well. And then when it came to the purchase, because I know companies are a bit funny about taking someone's credit card and paying for them. But for me, I do need someone to do that for me. So I do have to explain, no, it's fine for you to do that. And they would take out my bag and then they would tap it onto the card reader. And yeah, they in that instance, it was a good experience. Whereas enough one I went to and there was steps up to the store and I went to the front and there was security guards and members of staff there. And they just looked at me as if uh, they'd never seen a wheelchair before. It was so odd. They just kept looking and then they, then they were like, oh, do you want to come in? And it's like, well, yeah, I do actually. I wouldn't be <laughs> just at the bottom of the stairs looking to come in for no reason. And I they actually want to complete a purchase yeah. <laughs> and give you money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, don't they want my money? But so I, yeah, they eventually said, okay, got some security to come with me. We had a nice chat, but I had to go around the back and through some offices, which weren't part of the uh, brand, got up to the top to find that so the top got us to like the vip bit where you can have like this personalized experience but they lift to get down to the shop floor was out of service and i found out it'd been out of service for six months and i was thinking how can it how can that be for such a long time and you know i've like i said i've never really done luxury shopping before so I didn't know what they had to offer and it would be good to know to, you know, go around the shop and see what's there to be purchased. But I wasn't able to have that. So I had to just say, oh, I want wallets. And then this person bought the wallets. But yeah, we gave them that feedback and we're now going to be having a meeting with them to hopefully make that better. As well as when I did get the chance to email them that uh quickly how fast they got the lift fixed so that was interesting so we'll see how it got it you know at the end of the day we, i want to improve it i'm not here to bash them unless they're not willing to listen um because i think everyone needs that fair chance of growing and learning and uh, being able to make it better for everybody the willingness to be wrong in order to yeah. learn from your mistake and be right yeah. Um, I'm so glad that you have a meeting with them and that they're going to take your feedback seriously and that they fix their elevator because it can't possibly be that you're the only person in a wheelchair that has come to their store or that has wanted to come to their store. Yes, and if we also think about it, like a wheelchair isn't the only scenario in which someone might have an issue with stairs or not being able to use an elevator. Yeah, I mean, for six months, I think that's unacceptable in this day and age. And the person who was dealing with us, so she's Muslim and does Ramadan. And she's has to go up and down about three flights of stairs. So and not eating and drinking, you know, and usually sometimes it's hot. You know, that's a lot for someone to go up, st up and down the stairs. I know it's for people with mobility issues, but, you know, if it's a lift within the store, staff members should be able to use it as well. 
So, you know, there's loads of different reasons why a lift is so used for people. You know, parents with children in buggies. I see it's so many use cases and it's yeah really bad that it's been out was out for so long and sometimes pure laziness and what is that too i don't know <laughs> if i condone that but <laughs> so there's a question we ask on all of our spotlights and i'm interested to hear your answer when you hear the word accessibility what comes to mind for you um a level playing field and allowing people to allowing people who don't usually have access to something to have that access. I love that. That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. And so you've, you've taken just accessibility and made it fun. Can you tell us a little bit about wheels and wheelchairs? Sure. So yeah, at wheels and wheelchairs is an outdoor activity sports club where roller skaters push wheelchair users. And we've been doing it for, well, the group's been going on for over 10 years now. Going to be celebrating our 11th anniversary in October. And yeah, it's, it's, we have a lot of fun. I've been doing it for the past four years and now I'm the president of the organization and we take part in marathons. So as mentioned to you earlier, well, before we started recording, off to Berlin to take part in the marathon. Uh, so flying out today, and we take part in Halloween skates where we dress up, Santa skates. And yeah, it's great to be part of a community that that treats us like everyone else. And, you know, it's one of those things where we all have wheels underneath us. So if the surface is bad, we all suffer. But if it's great, we all have the best time. And uh, we always laughing and we tear the streets of London and yeah, have a lot of fun. And I've, I've really enjoyed being part of this group and we've been growing since I've been involved and who knows what the future holds for us as a group. Yeah. Congrats on the success there. That's awesome. Uh, okay. So I know about your trip to Berlin and it's going to be a fun trip, but I know you also do a little bit of advocacy around travel. Yes. Uh, Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I share the reality of it, the challenges which come with it. For example, airlines such as Ryanair deciding to damage my wheelchair, which can become quite challenging when you've gone to a country and your chair's not working or coming back and you're having to call up and sort that out. So showing the reality of that, but also how much fun one can have and learning about different cultures and how they do deal with disability and the differences and how well I can, can, can compare it to London if it's better or, or worse in some cases. So it's, yeah, definitely eye-opening and I do like ex uh, sharing those experiences. I mean, for for example, I went to Berlin last year and they have, for the underground, they have dedicated, so on the signage, it shows when the train's coming, but it actually has a wheelchair sign to say, oh, the next one's a wheelchair carriage. And that's not like here. So yeah, it's, it was yeah, very interesting. It's things that mm -hmm. you do discover in different countries. And the innovations that are happening. Oh, absolutely. Yes, of, yeah. Because of advocates like you who provide feedback and share what works and what doesn't, and then a business can learn from that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting the lived experience. And as we mentioned, people willing to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. Uh, my final question for you today okay. is, do, can you share with us a memorable experience you've had? You've told us a, a few stories today, but can you t share a memorable experience you've had in your advocacy work, something that's left a, la a lasting impact on you? Oh gosh, that's that's a big question as well. <laughs> I think there's a lot that's really uh, changed my perspective on things, but I think I think the most memorable one is, and it's still part of, part of the journey, but joining LinkedIn and having that having 
disability community allow me to be part of it and be able to have that space to talk and have people willing to listen to what I have to say, as well as learning from other amazing advocates and how I can always increase my accessibility. You know, because for example, I didn't know the importance of alt text or image descriptions, which I I didn't, yeah, like I said, didn't know anything about it. And then when I did know about it, I thought, oh gosh, it's going to be such a boring thing to do. And I don't know, it's going to take time for me to do this. But one person I've really, one person who showed me that you can have fun with it, Mark Webb really showed me that image descriptions don't have to be long and boring. They can be fun and you can make a story out of it. And now loads of people comment, sometimes just about the image descriptions, they love them so much. They're saying, oh, I always look, look forward to your image descriptions. I actually scrolled down specifically to the <laughs> image description first. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, and, and that's allowed me to have fun while doing it, but also making sure that it's accessible to those with visual impairments or those who may not be able to process images. And uh, yes, it's learning things like that's really stayed with me and uh, how that's been able to be integrated into my day to day is really good. And I'm happy about that. Right. And if we don't know, then we won't make any adjustments. But once we do know, we can improve on those just as we were saying before. So that's the power of community. Absolutely. Yes. And I mean, Crowd Community has got us in touch with each other and uh, made a friendship from it, which is really cool. Yeah. Well, it's always been fun laughing with you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you, Isaac, for joining today. We really appreciate your time and all of the work that you're doing. And I know the community appreciates it as well. Thank you ever so much. And uh, who knows? I may be back again for part three. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll the book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And to all of our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. You're welcome to continue the conversation with Accessibi by following us on Instagram at Accessibi underscore community. And we'll also include Isaac's LinkedIn page in the description. See you soon. Thank you.